1916 Easter Rising. And this is one of the most profound and significant parts of Irish history. And it's what makes me love my culture a lot. And being raised in, uh, as a first generation Clark in America, both my parents were born in Ireland. And they taught me about this a lot when I was younger, and it's a big part of it. So I'd like to share a little bit about it with you guys today. Um, today I'm going to talk about four main points about the Easter Rising. The first, I'm going to talk about a little bit about the perceived tyranny of the British crown that they had over Ireland that led it up to the rebellion of the Irish citizens. And then I'm going to talk about the rebels themselves, and then the shootings on Sackville Street. And then following that, I'm going to talk about the actual capture of Irish freedom that followed in 1916. Um, first off, before 1916, some of the tyranny that the British crown had over Ireland was it was a complete hold where the Irish people couldn't practice their own Irish nationalities. One example of this is, um, have any of you heard the name Erin? There's an American E-R-I-N, but the actual Irish name for Erin is E-I-R-E-A-N-N, -N, and that's the Irish word in Gaelic for Ireland itself. Um, preceding 1916, British ruled that the word Erin itself was illegal because it was viewed as declaring Ireland as a republic, and that was going against the British crown. So a lot of Irish citizens under secretly, in poems and songs and things like that, they actually used my name, Rasheen, which means Black Rose in Gaelic, and that's what they called the country, because it symbolized the pain that the beautiful country they viewed was suffering <coughs> because of the British crown. There were also a whole bunch of other things that um, where the British would impose their own taxes and where they had a parliament set up and Irish people would vote that they actually wanted to be an independent nation, but because of the absolute power of the monarch, they were able to override that and veto those votes, which eventually led up to the 1916 Easter Rising. It was a week before Easter Sunday during 1916. Um, a group of people, you may have heard of them, the IRA, it's the Irish Republic Army, has been illegal and illegal at different times throughout history. But they got together and joined, and they actually took over certain important buildings within Dublin City, which is the capital of Dublin, like the general <coughs> post office and certain churches and stuff like that. And they declared their nation free by writing a proclamation, which is similar to our Declaration of Independence. They had a proclamation of independence, which listed they wanted to have Ireland as a free state. And many, there were seven signatures on this proclamation, and I'm going to tell you about three of these rebels, as they're commonly known as. The first one I'm going to talk to you about is James Conley. And if you want, you can take the first paper that I get you. Instead of me telling you when he was born and what he did for a living and all that stuff, I'm going to read you, this is a song written about James Conley to give you a little bit better picture of who he was, what he suffered, and what he did for his country. This is a song called James Conley. A great crowd gathered outside of Kilmainham, with their heads all uncovered and they knelt on the ground. For inside that grim prison lay a true Irish soldier, his life for his country about to lay down. He went to his death like a true son of Ireland, the firing party he bravely did face. Then the order rang out, who sent arms fire, and James Conley fell into a ready-made grave. The black flag was hoisted, the cruel deed was over. Gone was the man who loved Ireland so well. There was many a sad heart in Dublin that morning when they mur murdered James Conley, the Irish rebel. Many years have rolled by since the Irish rebellion when the guns of Britannia they loudly, di loudly did speak. But the bold IRA, they stood so shoulder to shoulder and the blood from their bodies flowed down Sackville Street. <laughs> the four courts of Dublin, the, England, the English bombarded, the spirit of freedom they tried hard to quell, but above all the din came the cry, no surrender, and it was the voice of James Conley, the Irish rebel. This shows just some of the realness that happened that all these men who were rebels completely laid down their lives for their country, and they didn't do it for their own benefit, they did it for the sake of the land. Um, the next rebel that I'd like to talk to you about is Project Pierce, and that's the rebel film, Project Pierce. Project Pierce is one of the most 
most famous Irish poets and um, writers in Irish history. And all of his poems and songs and different things like that are all about Irish rebellion and the fight to get freedom and independence back from the British crown. He wrote this during his, just before the 1916 Rising, and it's entitled The Rebel Poem. I am come of the seed of the people, the people that sorrow, who have no treasure but hope, no riches laid up, but a memory of an ancient glory. My mother bore me in bondage, and in bondage my mother was born. I am the blood of serfs. The children with whom I have played, the men and women with whom I have eaten, have had masters over them. They have been under the lash of masters, and though gentle, have served churls. The hands that have touched mine, the dear hands whose touch is familiar to me, have worn shameful manacles, have been bitten at the wrist by manacles, have grown hard with the manacles and the taskwork of strangers. I am flesh of the flesh of these lowly, I am bone of their bone, I that have never submitted. I that have a soul greater than the souls of my people's masters. I that have vision and prophecy and the gift of fiery speech. I that have spoken with God on the top of his holy hill. And because I am of the people, I understand the people. I am sorrowful with their sorrow. I am hungry with their desire. My heart is heavy with the grief of mothers. My eyes have been wet with the tears of children. I have yearned with old, wistful men, and laughed or cursed with young men. Reddened for the they have served, they who should be free. Reddened for that they have gone in want while others have been full. Reddened for that they have walked in fear of lawyers and their jailers, with their writs of summons and their handcuffs, men mean and cruel. I could have borne stripes on my body rather than the shame of my people. And now I speak, being full of vision. I speak to my people. And I speak in my people's name to the masters of my people. I say to my people that they are holy and that they are august despite their chains. They are greater than those that hold them, and stronger and pure. They have but need of courage to call on the name of their God, God the unforgetting, the dear God who loves the people for whom he died naked, suffering, and shame. And I say to my people's masters, beware. Beware of the thing that is coming. Beware of the risen people, who shall take which you shall not give. Did you think to conquer the people, or that law is stronger than life, and that men's desire to be free? We will try it out with you, you that have harried and held, you that are bullied and bribed, tyrants, hypocrites, liars. This illustrates very imagely that the pain that a lot of the Irish citizens went through when they had they sent British soldiers into towns with guns and young children and mothers and brothers and sons were shot for no reason. And they even there was one thing called the black and tans, and there's a lot of songs that have been written about this. And what they did was the British, they actually took all their um, jail cell members and all the criminals of England, they took them and they released them into Ireland just in order to cause havoc and stuff like that. And I think it's just very fearless and inspirational how he was so bravely stood up to Eng England. And Ireland was such a small country compared to England at the time, and it still is. But I think this shows something that we can all really look up to. And moving on to the next one is Joseph Plunkett. He was the youngest of the signees of his um, proclamation. He was only in his own 20s. And he actually was planning on getting married when, after they signed the proclamation, they were all taken into jails and they had to stay in Birmingham jail. And in this jail, or Camillian jail, not Birmingham, um, he wrote this song to his fiancée, which he later became his wife. And it goes, as we gather in the chapel here in Old Camingham Jail, I think about these past few weeks, but will they say <coughs> we failed? From our school days, they have taught us that we must yearn for liberty. Yet all I want in this dark place is to have you here with me. O oh, gracious, hold me in your arms and let this moment linger. They'll take me out at dawn and I will die. With all my love, I place this wedding ring upon your finger. There won't be time to share our love, for we must say goodbye. Now I know it's hard for you, my love, to ever understand the love I bear for these brave men, the love for my dear land. But when Padre called me to his side, down in the GPO, I had to leave my own sick bed, and to him I had to go. O oh, gracious, hold me in your arms, and let this moment linger. They'll take me out at dawn, and I will die. With all my love, I place this wedding ring upon your finger. 
There won't be time to share our love, for we must say goodbye. Now as the dawn is breaking, my heart is breaking too. On this May morn, as I walk out, my thoughts will be of you. And I'll write some words upon the wall, so everyone will know. I love so much that I could see his blood upon the rose. O oh, gracious, hold me in your arms and let this moment linger. You'll take me out of dawn, and I will die. With all my love, I'll place this wedding ring upon your finger. There won't be time to share our love, for we must say goodbye. And that's one of the most famous Irish songs, and it's obviously very touching and very sad. And it paints the picture of this real life that was just given up, and this real young life that was given up for the sake of this country. And on Easter morn, after they had been kept in jail, they were all 15, there were seven signature and 15 rebels that were caught who didn't sign the proclamation. And in Sackville Street, which is the main street in Dublin, they were all stood up and lined up. And in front of a huge crowd, they were all shot down. And they all died for their country. Um, but thankfully enough, they didn't die for nothing. Before 1916, a lot of Irish people were very hesitant to break away from the British Crown because obviously for economic reasons it was very stable. But after seeing the sheer respectfulness for the land that these men gave up their lives, a lot of the country was inspired and it was joined together. And then in the following years, there was a huge movement to get independence from Britain and it was 90% of the country was all for it. Um, and actually a civil war broke out three years later because one of the leaders of the IRA settled to make it what is now, it's, there's 32 colonies in the whole country of Ireland, but six are in the north and 28 are in the south and the 28th are the republic. And when they settled for that decision that caused a civil war because so many people said that these men have lost their lives and we shouldn't stop for settling, we should try and get the whole thing. But later on, it became a commonwealth of Britain and then finally, in 1949, they signed the Constitution of Ireland and it became an independent nation. And I think this is just really important to look at because we all know our American history. We've all had taken this class. But this is my personal history. And knowing this growing up, it really made me appreciate my land that I'm from. And there's so many stories about this in other nations. And I think it's really important to look at this and know your own culture and know that there are so many people that have fought for the place we live.